What is up guys? Day after Christmas. Uh, it's been really, really cold here. Past couple days, like nine degrees. And as you guys know, we're at a point with this where I kind of have to start it and do a bunch of trial and error stuff. So having the garage door open was just not a thing. So I'm in here, I got the heat going now and I'm gonna look over, kind of rough draft my work, make sure that I didn't have any blatant uh, mishaps with any installs. And uh, then we're gonna start firing it up. I'm gonna open up the door, put on some heavier clothes. But as you guys probably heard in the video, just having a little bit of an idle surge. So usually telltale ICV slash vacuum related issue. Um, at, at least what I'm thinking, it could also just have to run some adaptations. It just might have to have some run time. So I'll check for that too. But notably, before I even dig in, right off the bat I realized I never hose clamped the math. And I was actually looking at the math, and I think this is kind of a, a decent find here. The math actually does not have either of the bolts that hold the actual slotted part into the housing, meaning like this is like has a gap there, it's not all the way tight. So that seems to me like that would definitely cause weird issues because I'd imagine that's a pretty big vacuum leak right there. So, or not, I guess not vacuum, but just air from, that's not going through the math. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolts in this from my other math I have, reinstall, check over all my vacuum lines, check over everything else, and then see how she runs. And I'll probably let it run. I got some headphones or uh, some like safety uh, headphones because so I can at least sit here and kind of monitor things without blaring out my eardrums because like it is so loud it's just miserable. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna look over everything because I kind of did it in a rush to kind of get the thing started that night before Christmas Eve. So I'm gonna make sure I put everything in right. I'm gonna test the ICV, make sure it's buzzing, and then um, we will go and do a couple starts. <laughs> Alright, so I found that the issue with the idle was actually the throttle cable was pulled too tight. So when the car was idling, the throttle was actually kind of open. Very minor, but it made a big deal because when I pushed up on it, as you guys saw in that video, it calmed right down. So the issue is, I don't know why, but just when it's in the E30, or at least this throttle cable exactly, is having issues. Um, like I have it max like length, but it's still having issues. So I basically just bent the bracket that mounts on the throttle body and was able to get it perfect. So now it's not getting pulled anymore and it runs perfect. I'm gonna start up again for you guys. But actually I lowered it on the ground and we're gonna go ahead and pull this thing out of the garage. It's first, uh, it's first uh, daylight or it's first move under its own power. I'm super excited. So I'm gonna pull this thing out and we're gonna see uh, how she goes. I'm hoping that there's no leaks anywhere. I'm gonna to try to bleed the power steering before it gets hot enough because I don't have any of the cooling stuff in yet, but it's cold out so we should be all right. We're gonna fire it up and try to get it out. All right, idling nice. So now let's see if she'll move. I think I have everything out of the way. Let's pray that the clutch is all good. All right, let's see. Yep. She moves under her own power. Oh man, I'm stoked. I am so stoked. <laughs> I wanna go for a ride, but I don't wanna take it far. Oh man, these brakes are sensitive. Wow. But uh, yeah, I don't wanna take it too far with no cooling system. But yeah, I'm gonna bleed it real quick. And then I'll come back to you guys. I'm gonna go take some pictures of it outside because I'm super stoked. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys in a minute. And I aired it out, and it does not hit the oil pan. If you guys can maybe see, it is extremely close, but it doesn't hit. So I'm just letting her idle, get some daylight. It's idling really good. I'd say everything's perfect. I need an exhaust, obviously. Uh, power steering, I went full lock, lock to lock. No noises, seemed like that worked out fine. Um, I just need a cooling system, so I'm not gonna run it very long, but I'm, I'm beyond stoked right now, I think. I think we're all there. I think she's. Uh, I think she's all right. I don't think it needs anything really. Uh, I just gotta obviously wrap up some things, clean up some stuff. But I think we're pretty solid right now. 30s back in the garage. Uh, all went well. Got it out. Got it in. Uh, nothing seems to be leaking, which is really good. I'm really happy with that. Topped off power steering. Power steering works. So I guess my setup with the reservoir relocation worked. 
And um, yeah, I guess, you know, all is well there. I got to get a bracket made for that to hold it a little more firm than the zip tie. But um, aside from that, I got the clutch fan on. So I do think I'm going to run the clutch fan. I test fit it and it does fit with the radiator. So all that's left to do now is get the cooling system done. Uh, I have, uh, so I'm using the radiator. I have a good upper hose from an E34, and then the lower hose I bought is a little too long. Uh, I looked up on the forums and they said uh, there's a Napa coolant hose that you buy that fits. So I'm gonna go pick that up tomorrow. And then I'm actually gonna use a uh, special tool that I'll show you guys all about later on in this video when I get to it. But the issue is I don't have a bleeder anymore because if you guys are familiar with these cars, the M20 has the bleeder on the thermostat housing and the radiator doesn't have a bleeder on it. So now that I'm using an M50 with the E30 radiator, I have no bleeder because I'm using a 325 radiator, not an M, um, what, a 318 M42, I think. Uh, that has a bleeder. Since I don't have any bleeders, there's some different tactics like using the upper radiator hose and all that, but a lot of people have a lot of issues with it. So what I'm actually going to do is pick up this thing from Zach, which is like a pressurized coolant thing. Again, I'll go over it tomorrow, but put it in here, sucks all the air out of the system and then flushes it in with coolant. So should work good. I've heard a lot of good things about it. So I'm going to do that tomorrow or the next day. But um, aside from that, when the car was uh, surging the idle when the, on the first startup video, I thought it was the uh, stuck open throttle body. That is why it was kind of revving high and that probably did contribute. But I found that when the car was outside running, when the air, because I aired it up and down and stuff to make sure everything was still working, when the air tank, comp or when the compressor kicked on, the car would start surging. And if I turned the compressor off, it would stop. So the battery is flat dead on this car. I mean, like doesn't even hold the charge, uh, or at least it hasn't because I haven't even charged it. So I'm gonna charge it overnight and see. But my guess is that the alternator was taking so much load to cover for the dead battery that it was making everything surge, which makes total sense because like I said, I did the test. So I'm pretty sure that's it. Uh, this is a different alternator that came on the M50. It's a better condition, remand one. It's still a little old. I have brand new ones in the basement, but I kind of wanted to live with this one, see if it works. If I continue having that issue with a fully charged or a brand new battery, then I'll swap it out. But for now, this alternator is doing fine. Uh, I think at least, you know, picking up the slack of a dead battery, but I'm stoked. Let it sit overnight, make sure nothing's leaking. Uh, and yeah, go from there. I got to get in contact with Zach, schedule a day to get the exhaust made. Uh, and I'll go in, I'll go over that when I get there. But aside from that, I'm, I'm so excited. It drives, uh, well, I haven't driven it far, but it goes into gear, reverse forward gears, moves, idles really good. So I'm excited. All right. So we're back. I got a few gadgets here. So I got myself a, uh, thermo, you know, infrared IR gun or whatever, because the temp gauge is on the fritz with this car, and when you're bleeding a car, the last thing you want is not you know, an in-op temp gauge, because that's a pretty good way to blow up your engine. So I got myself a little IR gun here. You can see, thermostat housing, 43 degrees. That's actually really cold, but I guess that makes sense. Um, Picked this up at Harbor Freight, like 70% off, like 20 bucks I think it was. Um, got some, uh, these are actually a Christmas gift as well. I got some uh, safety gear here for my ears because this exhaust is really loud and I've, I've been meaning to get some of these for a long time. I also got some fuel injector cleaner because this rail is kind of dirty and I want to just clear things out of this car. It hasn't run in a while. But most important, I got the 8484 Napa hose, which if you look up the M50 swap on the forums, this is what you use for the lower radiator hose. You basically cut it to fit. It's like a universal 90. So I'm gonna have to cut the hell out of this. Uh, and then I have a random E34 upper that I believe is going to work for me. So got my two coolant hoses and then I got my uh, thing from Zach, which uh, I'm going to have to actually look up how to use it because the Airlift brand one had all the instructions and stuff. This one doesn't, but you'll see here. Hold on, let me set down the camera for a second. So this is the, this is the thing. We got this rubber cone that's going to go into the expansion tank. And then we got this. So air compressor hooks up to this left side here. And then I believe I push a button or flip a switch, pressurize the system. Uh, it'll pull vacuum and hold it if there's no leaks. And then after a certain amount of time, then I take the, uh, the hose right here, dip it in the coolant bottle, flip this switch, I believe, and this will suck in all the coolant and fill the system. Uh, I've heard a lot of mixed things. 
The M50 E30 guys seem to love this. My friends seem to say it's a piece of junk. So we'll see how well it works. I might have to still do some initial bleeding after that. But uh, I figured this would be better to use than nothing. So I'm pretty excited to have that. But uh, now we got to place the radiator in, mount it up, get the hoses in, and then we'll have the cooling system finally taken care of. And then we can hook up the tool, flush it with coolant, see what happens. And then we're going to turn it on and get to bleeding. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous, I hope this kind of goes well, I don't want this to be a pain, because I could go for my first drive in this thing tonight if uh, all goes well. It's going to be a miserable and a loud drive, but I could still go for that drive even though I have no steering wheel on, but I can fix that. You guys probably wouldn't believe me if I told you that I've spent the last two and a half hours trying to get these hoses, because that is what happened. I, I can't even explain to you guys the frustration. So I showed you guys the Napa hose I got, right, and I ended up cutting it and I messed up and I cut it too short and it didn't reach. I kept doing that over and over again. I have a ton of upper radiator hoses from all my prior E34s in the past and most of them were too short. I had one that was a good length, but I was gonna use it for the upper, but I kept on messing up. I found this hose in my basement, cut that, didn't work. I cut every hose I had. I mean, you could see all the cuts, nothing worked. So I had, to go to, I had to go to AutoZone, and they actually had an E36 upper, which is the stock upper, which fits. So that's awesome. No cutting involved there. But they didn't have a 90-degree bent hose. So I had to go to O'Reilly's and finally get a 90-degree bent hose because nowhere else had it. I got it. I finally cut it right, and it's in. Everything's installed. I got to tighten down the radiator. The fan has little to no clearance, but it works. And now we are hooking up this tool here. So just jam it in the expansion tank. Everything is hooked up. Now I'm gonna hook up the air compressor to it, press the button, it should suck all the air out of the system. And then uh, I'm guessing I hook up my thing in my coolant and flip this switch. So we'll see, I'll have you guys watch and hopefully I know what I'm doing. All right, so I'm gonna hit this button to I believe 25 and see what happens. Oh, I actually think I have to pull this off and well, it's not losing pressure, which is good. But I think I have to pull this off. This is expelling everything. But you can see my hoses are getting squished, which is what's supposed to happen. I'm going to pull this off really quick if I can figure it out. Um, or maybe this doesn't come off. No, it doesn't come off. All right, I'm going to keep going then. I believe it says go to 25. I'm almost sure of it. So I'm going to do that. If I can get there. All right, so I can't get it any more than where it's at right now. It went up a little bit more, but no pressure lost, so that's good, no leaks. So now I have the hose in my coolant. I'm gonna flip this switch, and let's see what happens. Oh yeah, it sucks it right away. Oh my God, that's actually pretty cool. So yeah, we'll see. Um, the hoses should start filling up. I'm probably gonna blow through this coolant bottle. I'll have to get this other one ready. All right, so I kept going with the containers and it did eventually fill up and I have this full now. So I think we're kind of there. Um, you know, so now I'm gonna turn it on, pray for the best. That's where the IR gun comes in. So I'm gonna monitor the coolant gauge, see if that works first off, and then monitor my temps here. So if I'm starting to see 200 and it keeps going, then I know that I still have to bleed the system. Then I'll kind of have to figure out what I have to do. I'm hoping that that worked first rip. A lot of people say it does. So we'll kind of see, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna fire it up, put on my hearing protection, get this door open, and uh, monitor the coolant, and we'll see what happens. I'll let you guys know. All is well so far. So we're cruising, guys. I got my headset on. I've been getting out checking the uh, temp on the thermostat housing. It's not really going over 140, but it's like 20 degrees with no hood. So I don't think it will. Realistically, I gotta go park it. I forgot to turn the heat on full blast when I did the uh, coolant, but I put it on full blast and it's hot, so that's good. But yeah, I'm just cruising it, taking it easy. I don't wanna mess up the clutch. It goes into all the gears. Um, I need an exhaust. This is just really stressful, no exhaust. But so far, so good. So I'm pretty happy. I'll see you guys when I get back to the house. Uh, I feel like I'm just gonna be losing stuff. This is very stressful, very stressful. Very, very stressful. And we made it back. 
without any mishaps and I am so freaking stoked on it like everything went well it's really brutal to drive with no exhaust so like it wasn't even fun and I didn't want to be on it too much because I didn't want to you know blow up the clutch I kind of want to follow clutch break-in procedures despite people saying that that is stupid aka all my friends but um yeah I was just trying to take it easy kind of feel it out uh I accidentally drove with the e-brake up half the time did a few little you know things and all, all seemed to be well heat blew hot uh I had my IR gun and I stopped in, um every so often and the temp was never over 150. Even sitting in my garage idling, it never went over 160. Uh, given it's not even, it's not warm out, so obviously, but heat blows hot and the temp gauge, or in the IR thing, read perfectly fine. So I would say that that pressure bleeder worked fantastically. I'm like super hyped, like how easy that was, because if you guys are familiar, bleeding E30s with M50s is seen as a very daunting and annoying task because I don't have a bleeder anymore because there's no reservoir on the radiator and the M20 had it on the thermostat housing which I don't have. So people have a hell of a time bleeding these things and that made it take like 10 minutes max. So really hyped about that. I'll check the coolant level in the morning. I'm going to check all the fluids right now. Uh, my only complaint driving this thing is the brakes. They're extremely like soft, the pedal, and then it's just like you slam on them. So. If you so the, the pedal is so soft to where once you get hit a certain point you like they just lock up and it's like slamming on them so I don't know if that's because I don't have any hose clamps on this and maybe the vacuum's kind of goofy but pretty sure I have the check valve in the right way uh, I've dealt with this uh, many times I've had many e34s with this so I think maybe some hose clamps will help aside from that I don't really know what could be the issue there it's um, kind of annoying I don't remember what the brakes were like before but I don't remember being like that Unless maybe I let some air in the system when I pulled all this fluid out of the reservoir, which I wouldn't be surprised. So maybe I'll just bleed them. But uh, other than that, no other complaints. Power steering was good. No leaks. Um, I actually got home and the car was surging really, really bad. So, you know, the uh, uh, from the startup video, which I thought I remedied by charging the battery. But when I got back, it was surging really bad. I unplugged the MAF and absolutely nothing uh, changed. So I decided to go grab the other MAF, which I thought was bad, which was this one. And it turns out that when I replaced that, the car ran perfectly fine. Never had any issues. So either I switched them up or something got goofed up, but the MAF that I bought for this thing was not any good, and this original one was good. But like I said, I don't know if I mixed them up or what I did. So I got the new MAF in there, and it runs perfectly fine. Uh, got the check edge light because of the O2 sensor, I'd imagine. There's no O2. So if anything, if it's running kind of weird, uh, I'd blame the O2 sensor. So really, until I have the exhaust, I'm not going to sit here and kind of critique it and wonder. Because, I mean, I'd say it runs pretty freaking good for running a, a closed loop or an open loop because it's not closing the loop. So I'm stoked. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys are doing this, I would definitely go ahead and just get yourself an airlift pressure bleeder. It made my life so easy. I knew it would. People people were kind of skeptical on it, but it worked really good. So all is well here. Uh, I got a few more things to do. I got to put the hood on, get the exhaust made. That'll be another video. But aside from that, then we're going to be doing the uh, new wheels, fitting those, redoing the trunk setup. So still got a lot left to do on this thing. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. By the time this video is up, I should have my merch up. So go ahead and check out the link in my bio. It'll take you to my Teespring if you guys want to support my builds and you want to see me buy more stupid stuff. Uh, and I imagine that's why you guys are watching my videos because you like seeing me buy stupid BMWs. So if you want to, if that, you guys want to keep that going, it'd mean a lot to me if you want to go buy a shirt. Uh, let me know if you guys want me to do other designs. Right now it's the E36. Uh, I'm interested in planning on doing you know most of my cars. Let me know what car you'd like to see next. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next one.